travel from all over the planet to visit Bath. You know, they read the Jane Austen novels and they go to what, look at the Georgian terraces. Well, they exist here in Armagh, and uh, you know, quite a lot of people, certainly around the planet, don't know about them. Quite a lot of people in, in Ireland, certainly uh, across, in, uh, across in England, don't know about it either. Um, what I didn't know was why. I knew, the, I knew the places were here, but you know, who built them and why did they build them? Well, it was Richard Robinson who did most of them. Okay, standing by and action. Well, Paul, who we got here? Um, let's see. The King George and uh, Queen Charlotte. Uh, these Archbishop Richard Robertson, the uh, Church of Ireland Primate, came here in 1765. And basically, he decided he didn't like what he saw. It was, he thought, it was a bit, uh, well, not in keeping with his position. And he had a lot of money, uh, something like £18,000 stipend. You know, back 250 years ago. I don't know what that equates to, but it's several million pounds. But to be fair to him, he decided to um, to spend it on um, on uh, improving Armagh. He he originally wanted to turn it into a university city. His big plan was to make it rival. Uh, I mean, the only big university in Ireland at that stage was Trinity College Dublin. He decided he wanted to take them on. So that was the scale of his ambition. Didn't quite achieve that, but the, the legacy he left, which you know we've been looking at, was is tremendous in terms of some of the. Some of the buildings, the, the palace domain, the, the jail, I mean, tremendous, you know, but it's, it is a lovely building and it's going to be turned into a hotel, the Royal School, the Mall, the Robinson Library, the list goes on. There are just so many buildings that are associated with him that are, that are part of his legacy. And we're just looking at, you know, just seeing, I suppose, how that happened, why it happened, and uh, how, he, how, he, how he actually achieved that, how he made it happen. Armagh is always, I think, you know, with generalists, is always associated with St. Patrick and its cathedrals, which of course it, it, it's, it's well known for. But um, as a child, when I used to wander around, I did, I remember, I always used to think, wow, you know, this just, just feels such a nice place. And, you know, as I've grown up, I've been to places like Bath and Dublin and all the, all the other great Georgian cities. And then you realise Armagh is one of them. Well, there are more delights to see. You head, head this way. Well, okay. The City Council have been cognizant of, of the heritage, but also look then at the overall built environment and the, and the experience. You can't have a city as a museum piece. People live in it, people work in it, people go to school in it, people do all kinds of, kinds of things in the city, and it has to be vibrant, it has to have a centre. And I think you know, the, the changes they've made to the, to the marketplace and what's going on there are, are fantastic and another great draw. Yeah. 